Hello. I'm hoping that my, ooh, it is. I was going to say I'm hoping that my microphone's working tonight because last night it didn't work for some strange reason. So here we are, part 17 of our story. My goodness me. Here we are, look. David Williams, Demon Dentist, is the story that we're reading at the moment. Um, we're going to have three chapters tonight because they're quite, they're quite short chapters. So we have three. They're no less exciting though, even though they're short. They are snappy. Here we go. It is sure to be a slow, agonising death, children, expounded the witch. Exactly how I like them. Then I am going to feast on your bones. She looked down at her trusty white cat. Guess what you are having for tea tonight, Fang? The beast's ears pricked up and she gazed into her mistress's eyes. That's right, yummy, scrummy children's bones, Fang heard loudly. Far off in the distance, Alfie heard an echo. The cat turned her head and hissed. The tooth witch cocked her head suspiciously and then quickened her pace. With her superhuman strength, she dragged the huge, heavy throne of teeth into position. Next, she climbed up to stand on the seat and started unfastening the chains that bound the children's wrists. Both were now trembling uncontrollably with fear. I am going to drop you in the cauldron together, announced the witch, just so that you can hear each other scream as you die. Just to say, I don't mind if you put him in before me, muttered Gabs, attempting a little black humour to try and lighten the situation. Uh, isn't it ladies first, said Alfie. Within moments, the witch had untied their wrists. Now the pair were hanging upside down with the nasty, bubbling yellow goop lapping at their heads. The noxious stench was so foul that Alfie and Gabs could hardly breathe. Please, 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 I beg you, appealed Alfie now. You can boil me, but let Gabs go free. She's not done anything wrong. Here he is, look, you can see Alfie just hanging there on those chains above the, um, the cauldron. <gasps> It was no witch. It was no use. The witch was not for turning. Human emotion, how pitiful, she muttered as she dragged the throne a few paces and climbed up it again. Now the witch was busying herself and fastening the children's ankles. Don't worry, children, mummy's nearly there. It shouldn't be long now, chirped the witch. Alfie's left leg swung free and his whole body dropped down further. His hair was now touching the toxic goo below. The acid was burning the ends. Far off within the depths of mine, there was a definite sound of something rattling. The witch was struggling with the boy's final manacle. It's all very well making everything out of teeth, but it doesn't half make things very fiddly. Now Fang started to help her mistress, leaping onto her shoulder and nibbling at the binds with her sharp teeth. Any moment now, Alfie was going to in and meet his end. But looking out into the tunnel that led to the cave, Alfie could just see something travelling fast towards them on the ceiling. In a flash, he realised it wasn't on the ceiling. He was, of course, upside down. It was on the ground. A train. A train was coming straight towards them. Hanging there like sides of meat at the butcher's, Alfie gave Gabs a look, urging her to stay silent. He didn't want to give the game away to the tooth witch. As the train sped towards them, the boy smiled. At the front of it, driving the engine, was a welcome face. His dad. He'd come to rescue him. As the clatter of the locomotive became louder, the tooth witch turned her head. A curse upon you she whispered before hurrying the pace of her wickedness. Her long spindly fingers and Fang's sharp teeth raced to unfasten the boy's final shackle and plunge him headfirst into the cauldron. As Alfie peered down, he realised he only had seconds to go until he became a skeleton. The train sped through the entrance of the cave and careered along its tracks, heading straight for the witch. Just as the evil duo had managed to release Alfie's bonds, there was a huge crash, bang, wallop. The locomotive ploughed straight into the throne. Here's a picture of it, look, ploughing straight into the throne. Look, there's Fang, there's the Tooth Witch, there's the throne, there's Alfie's dad. The Tooth Witch lost her balance and she 
uh, she and her feline beast plunged into the mummy's special toothpaste mix. <coughs> Screamed the witch. <coughs> Hissed the cat. Within moments, both had sunk below the surface. The thick yellow goo was drowning out their screams. Much to his surprise, Alfie was still alive. Gabs had managed to grab his ankle just in time. Now, rocking her body back and forth, she swung in clear of the cauldron. It was as if they were a trapeze act at the circus. As Alfie flew through the air, his dad was just able to grab his wrist and yank him to the safety of the train. Opening his eyes, Alfie was now clinging by his fingertips to the front of the train. Then he turned and looked forward. At that moment, he realised he wasn't safe yet. The train was heading at speed, slap bang into the wall of the cave. Dad, yelled the boy, the brakes. Alfie's father heaved the brake lever up and with a huge screech, the train came to a sudden stop with Alfie less than a gnat's hair away from the rocks. <gasps> Thanks, sighed the boy. That's what dads are for, <coughs> spurred his dad breathlessly. All the dust and dirt in the cave was no good for his lungs. It was making him cough. The doctors had told him to never go back down a mine. That just one more lungful of coal dust could prove fatal. But right now, Dad could only think about one thing, and that was saving his son. Dad, you killed the tooth witch and her cat, exclaimed Alfie. All in a day's work, son, he joked. How did you know I was down here? Winnie called me. She guessed I'd be the only one who knew my way around the mine. And now the whole town are on their way. Ugh, good old Winnie, sighed the boy. Ahem, <clears throat> coughed Gabs theatrically. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry Gabs. Now, as much as I really love hanging around upside down over a boiling witch's cauldron, I was wondering whether you could untie me, she said. Dad stared at her. Who's this son? <coughs> Is it your girlfriend? No, for the last time she is not my girlfriend, exclaimed Alfie. All right, replied Dad, coughing quite badly now. I only asked. With all his might, he pulled a handle on the engine. Slowly and surely, the train reversed along the tracks to stop beside the cauldron. Alfie leapt off the front and onto the top of the engine. From there, he stood on his tiptoes and untied the last of Gab's manacles. There was a distinctly awkward moment where Alfie found himself holding a girl who was definitely not his girlfriend upside down by her ankles. However, Dad leaned out and pulled her onto the train. Gab's jumped down and landed on a sack that was sitting in the car behind. Careful, <coughs> wheezed Dad. Why? asked Gab's. That's all dynamite, said his dad. Cool, said the girl. Alfie knew all about how dynamite was used in coal mines. His dad had told him many times about how he often needed to blast away hard rock to get to the coal behind. Gab's face lit up with an idea. Let's use the dynamite to seal the cave behind us. The witch is dead, said Alfie. Let's just get out of here. And they were about to do that when... Oh, look! screamed the girl. Behind them, the tooth witch and her cat were rising up out of the cauldron. All their skin and flesh had been burned away. Now they were both just skeletons. Skeletons standing on their bony feet and coming after them fast. Oh my goodness, I thought that was the end of them. Okay, one more chapter. How am I doing? Eight minutes. We've got, we got time. The skeletons were marching right towards them, the witch in front and the cat out a few paces behind, her long, thin tailbone standing on end. There's no stopping her, <coughs> said Dad. Quick, <coughs> let's go. Yeah, who go, yelled Dad. Dad yanked the lever and a train sped backwards out of the cave. Gabs started rummaging through the sack. What are you doing, said Alfie. I'm grabbing their dynamite so we can seal her in, replied Gabs. Now, if you can find a lighter or something... Alfie looked under another sack and found a tin house and some ancient matches. Then he lit the dynamite with shaking hands. <coughs> Be careful, you two, <coughs> shouted Dad at the pair. Don't throw it until I tell you, barked Alfie. They both stared nervously at the stick as the fuse burned down. Just before the train reached the cave entrance, Alfie yelled, Now! The girl threw the dynamite stick into the air and <coughs> it exploded bringing huge rocks crashing to the ground behind them. A gigantic cloud of dust filled the tunnel. We did it, cheered Alfie. Yay! Now the train was travelling along the central tunnel at speed. They were heading towards the lift that would take them above ground and to safety. 
For a while, all that the three, the three people could hear was the rattle and hum of the train. Then out of the shadows, Dad spotted something. No, he cried. The kids turned round and saw... Two skeletons, one human and one cat, zooming after them through the tunnel on the gas cylinder. Mommy is going to get you, screamed the ghost skeleton. Dad, make this thing go faster, shouted Alfie. It won't go any faster, son, spluttered Dad. With the cylinder catching up with the train, Fang's skeleton was taking clawed swipes at Dad, who was desperately ducking out of the way. The witch skeleton cackled as what was left of her cat scratched the man's head viciously. Gabs held the second stick of dynamite whilst Alfie lit the fuse. Let me throw it this time, he said. Now, she shouted. Alfie hurled it at the evil duo hovering just behind him. <coughs> the explosion threw the pair off balance, but it wasn't enough to stop them dead. Their bones rattled as they scrabbled to stay on the cylinder. We've only got one more stick of dynamite warned Gabs. The cat skeleton leaped off the cylinder and landed with claws drawn on Dad's head. She clawed her way all over him until her bum bone was sticking right in the poor man's nose. Ow! yelled Dad in pain as the beast sank her fangs into his arm. In pain, he shot his hand up on the train throttle, causing the engine to begin to shudder to a stop. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alfie had lit the fuse on the last stick of dynamite that Gabs was holding. Just as she was getting ready to throw it, there was a squeal of brakes and the train stopped. Uh-oh, I don't think they meant to do that. The stick of dynamite slipped out of Gab's hand and dropped into the car. The fuse was burning down fast. Any moment now, the dynamite was going to explode. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm just going to see how long the next chapter is. I wasn't going to do it. I've got to do it. One more chapter. Four chapter extravaganza. Whoa. Gabs, jump! shouted Alfie. The girl leapt out of the train car. Then the boy vaulted over to his father and pulled him clear of the engine just as the dynamite exploded. <laughs> Rocks fell from the roof of the tunnel, crashing down on top of them. Cat Skeleton retreated to her bony mistress who had fallen off of her laughing gas cylinder some way back down the tunnel. Because of the explosion, the cylinder had sprung a leak. It was hissing on the ground and its sweet smelling gas was filling the mine. Out of the dust storm behind him, Alfie could see the outline of the witch skeleton rise into her feet. The train was now a mangled wreck and the lift was still a long way off. Dad was buried under a mountain of rocks. They had crushed whatever strength he had left in him. Run, <coughs> boy! gasped Dad as Alfie furiously rolled the rocks off of his father's body. <coughs> Save yourself. <laughs> Why am I laughing? <laughs> this isn't, <coughs> this isn't funny. <laughs> it must be the <laughs> laughing gas, <laughs> replied the boy. I'm laughing too. Dad, I'm not going to leave you. <laughs> Down here. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Gabs. Help me. <laughs> help me grab an arm. <laughs> the kids began to heave Alfie's father down the tunnel. I'm too <laughs> heavy. <coughs> Gasped and wheezed his dad. His breathing was rattling in his chest now. Just leave me behind. <coughs> <coughs> Never. <laughs> replied Alfie, and together he and Gabs hauled Dad along the track closer and closer to the lift. <laughs> Mummy's going to get you, laughed the witch skeleton, her bones rattling as her shoulders shook. Even what was left of Fang couldn't stop sniggering. With her superhuman strength, the witch skeleton pushed the train and its puny cars aside. Alfie and Gabs started running as fast as they could along the track, dragging Dad behind them. Finally, they reached the lift. The man's wheelchair was lying discarded by the metal door where he must have left it. The three tumbled into the lift, and with all of his might, Alfie slammed the door shut behind them. The two skeletons had caught up with them now, and soon the bones of their hands and paws were rattling on the door, frantically trying to open it. How did you get the lift working? pleaded Alfie. You just have to connect those two loose wires, wheezed Dad. <coughs> then pull the top handle. <coughs> 
Gabs brought the wires together as Alfie tugged at the lever. The lift shuddered into life. It travelled upwards at speed, leaving the evil twosome below. Alfie sighed with relief. Dad, we're going to make it! But any relief was short-lived because the skeletons were now clinging to the caged floor of the lift as it made its ascent. Suddenly, the witch skeleton's long finger bones twisted through the holes in the floor and grabbed the children's feet. A battered and bruised dad crawled across the floor of the lift. With all of his strength he had left in his body, he tried to beat the witch skeleton's hands back with his fists. However, now she was ripping open the metal floor of the cage, tearing through it like paper. Despite dad's best efforts, the witch's skull burst through the razor sharp and her razor sharp teeth bit hard into Gab's ankles. <coughs> Screamed the girl, clinging onto the bottom of the lift with one puny paw and swiping with the other, fanged the cat skeleton viciously clawed at Dad's hands. The beast was trying her best to stop him from attacking her mistress, but whatever Dad did, the witch skeleton would not be deterred anyway. She just tightened her jaws around Gab's ankle even further before opening them slightly to smell. Mummy is going to eat you! Oh, okay, 16 minutes. We've got to stop there. We just got to! We just got to! Tomorrow night, though, oh my goodness, the last few chapters. Mm. We're on 39 tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, I had a couple of requests now. Thanks. It's just, and it makes me realise that people are still watching me as well, which is lovely. Thank you very, very much. I've also kind of nearly exhausted all of the rooms to read my books from that. I'm now sitting out in the garage. My goodness. Where can I do it tomorrow? I don't know. We'll find somewhere. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye-zy-bye.